Hello, my dear students. Welcome to the Grade Eleven English Language Class of Saint Peter's College, Kalam Four, Negambu Branch. So today I thought of doing a simple grammar lesson with y'all. So before I start up with my other competency levels, so I thought of starting with the two easiest competency levels. Competency level four point seven, that is uses nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs properly, and competency level six point nine. uses the adverbs correctly so the lesson is on parts of speech the word classes i know you all are very much familiar with the words so you all know there are you all know that there are eight word classes so if we start from nouns we have verbs adjectives adverbs conjunctions prepositions determiners so these are the eight parts of the speech so what is the connection between these parts of the speech to the english language how does it function so if i move on to the function of the word class each and every word that comes in a sentence belongs to a certain word class each and every word that comes in a sentence belongs to a certain word class so for an example i have taken she is a teacher the word she is a pronoun is is a verb a is an article and teacher is a noun we can take determiner a is a determiner teacher is a noun so if we move on to another example the gardener watered the rose plant daily the is a determiner gardener is a noun water is a verb the is a determiner rose is an adjective plant is a noun and daily is an adverb so here children each and every word that comes in this sentence belongs to a word class so those are the eight parts of speech the eight word classes right no so when you consider these eight classes we can divide them into two sections there are four main word classes the four main word classes are nouns verbs adjectives and adverbs so today i'm going to cover up these four uh, word classes very roughly okay the first word class nouns so if you take nouns that is a naming word you will be name something you give a name to a particular thing object so a name of a place can be taken as a noun a name of a person a name of an object and a name of an animal so these things can be taken as nouns so nouns are basically naming words so now again you can say, go for an uh, description a word that represents a person place thing or an idea so you all are familiar with the person place and things and what is this idea in my further uh, slides i'll explain what this idea is about so before i move on to all the classifications first i thought of taking two cl uh, classification that is concrete and abstract nouns so there are different many types of nouns so of the first two categorization that i'm going to come up with is concrete and abstract nouns so what are concrete nouns concrete nouns are the nouns which is used by this five senses we know we have five senses so the things that we can touch with our hands the things that we can hear the things that we can taste the things that we can smell and things that we can see all these stuff are called concrete nouns i've given some examples cup you can touch that you can feel it cake you can either smell or taste so you have keys shares and balls which you can touch so the nouns which we can uh, hold or nouns which we can identify through our five senses are called concrete nouns so we are moving on to abstract nouns so in my earlier slide i was talking about ideas when i was explaining about nouns nouns are names of persons animals things and ideas so we'll move on to this slide and see what this idea is is about abstract nouns cannot be seen so we were talking about earlier we were talking about concrete nouns 
Now here, abstract nouns cannot be seen, cannot be touched, tasted, heard or smelled, but they can be experienced. So remember children, abstract nouns are the nouns which we can experience. They cannot be detected through our five senses. For an example, if I say happy, that is something which I would experience due to some happening. But I cannot touch, I cannot use my any of my five uh, senses in order to detect happiness. But that word happy is an abstract noun because we experience it. So I have taken the two, abstract and concrete nouns. Abstract nouns are words that refer to entities that we cannot feel with our five senses. Concrete noun, on the other hand, can be detected and felt with our five senses. I hope you are clear with that. Okay. Moving on to the next classification of nouns. First, we spoke about the first clarification that was on concrete and abstract. So, the next classification is common nouns and proper nouns. So, if you take the word as a whole, like if you take the word common, what is the meaning of common? You can easily keep it in mind because common means something in common. Something which is common to everybody. Something like that. But when you say proper, it's a bit different than that. You are properly mentioning about a person or an object or something. So keep that in mind. And we are moving on to the next slide. Proper and common nouns. Proper noun. A specific thing. A capitalized thing. Second one. Common noun. A pencil. General. Not capitalized. So what is this common and proper nouns? So when you take common nouns, the things that are in common. For an example, if I say teacher, so you can take me as a teacher. So it's a common noun. There are a lot of teachers around. Okay? So I cannot start the word teacher with a capital letter. But if I say my name, my own name, then you can start my name with a capital letter. Okay? So then it becomes a proper noun. So another example, river. River is a common noun. It's a common object which is there in the environment. But if I say river Nile, then the word Nile is specific. It talks about a specific river. So then that word is called a proper noun which you can start with a capital letter. But in common nouns, you are not going to start. Example, river. River should start with a simple letter. While the Nile begins with a capital letter and it will be a pronoun. Sorry, proper noun. We have given you some examples. Here I have given you some common nouns. First one, a man, the name Victor. The word proper noun is Victor, so the word Victor has been started with a capital letter. And you have the mountain, and then ocean, state, country, building, cap. Likewise, they have given you certain common nouns where examples are being given proper nouns which begins with capital letters. Moving on to the next classification. Mass nouns and count nouns. Okay, we'll move on to the first one. What are count nouns? Now, when you take the word count, that means you can count something. Okay, we'll see. Count nouns are nouns that we can count. If you say five pencils, again, we can count the five pencils. One, two, three, four, five, so and so like. You can count the number of pencils. So there can be more than one of them as well. So let's see some examples here. Count nouns. Here, a notebook, an apple, some oranges, few pupils. Here I have not exactly mentioned the number of number of oranges or pupils, but I have used a certain word to quantify them. To quantify the amount of oranges and pupils. And because there is only one notebook and an apple, so I have used the word a uh, and an in order to quantify them. Here, count nouns. Aside from numbers, now I was talking about five pencils, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so there you have used the numbers, but aside from numbers, these words can be used in order to quantify them. These are the words a, uh, an, the, some, many, and few, like these examples. Right? Okay. 
So these are called con con uh, count nouns, which you can take the count. So when it comes to mass nouns, mass nouns are nouns which cannot be counted. They can be also called as uncountable nouns. So generally, they do not have plural forms. We do not use numbers to count them. For example, if you say sugar, it's an uncountable noun. You can't say one sugar, two sugar, but you will have some other things in order to show the quantity. So use, we use counters instead. We have given you two examples. Bottle of milk. Milk is a mass noun, uncountable noun. So in order to show the quantity, to quantify it, I have used the counter bottle of. So you can say, you can say one milk, two milk, but instead in order to show the quantity, you can say a bottle of milk, two bottles of milk, right? So the counter is bottle. The next example, strands of hair, you cannot say a hair, one, sorry, one hair, two hair, likewise you can't count it because it's an uncountable noun. So here, when hair is a mass noun, the counter is strands, strands of hair. Okay, now when it comes to parts of speech, the second major word class is verbs. So you all are very much familiar with the words, verbs. So when I take the word, you automatically, the, the action words comes up, sitting, dancing, running, jumping and all this stuff, but we'll see. There are different types of categorizations in verb. The first classification is verbs can be divided into two sections. Action words, which I was already spoken about. And the other one is auxiliary verb. So what are these auxiliary verb? What is the difference between these two? Why do we use action words and auxiliary verb? So for an example, if I say she is running, so you know that girl is running. There is an activity. There is an act. Now I'm teaching you all. So I do an act. But if without any movement, if I want to complete a sentence, there should be a verb. You all know that there are specific things that should be there to make a sentence, a complete sentence. There should be a verb. So if I want to make it a fully com make a group of words, a fully complete sentence, there should be a verb. So if I say she is a girl, there is no any action there. She is a girl. She is just standing maybe. She is a girl. But in order to make this sentence a fully complete sentence, we have to use a helping word. There should be a helping word in order to make this set of words a fully complete sentence. So for that, we have used this auxiliary words. So the word auxiliary verb is another word for helping words. Or else there is another grammatical word that is called verb B. In your level examination, most of the questions are there. Complete the sentences with using a verb B. So that means verb B means the helping words or the auxiliary verbs. Right? So I have given you some examples. Am, is, are goes together. Am, is, are, was, were, has, have, had, had been. So all these are called auxiliary verbs, the helping words or the verb Bs to help a group of words to become a fully complete sentence. Okay. So these are the two, the, this, these are the two uh, variations in verbs. The first classification. The second classification is transitive verbs, sorry, transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. So we'll first move on to the example. The child broke the window. Now, first thing that you can identify in the sentence is the verb. Broke is a verb. Here the broke is a verb. Broke what? The window. There is a direct object. The child broke what? The window. So the window is the direct object. So in a sentence, if there is a direct object, that particular verb in the sentence is called a transitive verb. So you're given a sentence. First you identify the verb and from the verb you have to ask the question, who? Sorry, what? So, broke what? The window. So, then the window is the direct object. There is a direct object to the verb. So, if, it is in, if there is a direct object in a sentence, that particular verb which appears in the sentence becomes a transitive verb. The 
Brewer broke is a transitive verb. The window is the direct object. So the next one is what is. So sorry. We'll move on to the explanation given. Transitive verb. A verb with a direct object. A verb with a direct object. That is the explanation given for transitive verbs. So the next one is intransitive verbs. So first we'll move with the example. The cat slept. A very simple example. The cat slept. The cat is a noun. Verb is slept. The cat slept. Is there a direct object? Is there a direct object? No. A direct object is not there. So if a direct object is not there in a certain sentence, that particular verb which appears in the sentence is called an intransitive verb. Is that clear? The sentence is there, the cat slept, no direct object. So when there is no direct object, this particular verb becomes an intransitive verb. So we'll move on to the explanation, intransitive verb, a verb without a direct object. Okay, so these are the two classifications about verbs. Now we are moving on to the third major word class in the parts of speech, that is adjectives. So there are four types of adjectives. I have given you the four adjectives, a small explanation together with the examples. First we move on to the first one. Adjectives of quality. If you take a flower, the quality of the flower, what type of flower it is. Whether it is soft, whether what the color of the flower, you say something about the noun. You say something about the flower. You say the quality of the object. So those words are called adjectives of quality. Words which describes a noun. You say something more about the noun, the appearance of the noun. Example, a beautiful flower, then the word beautiful is the adjectives of quality. You qualify the noun. You say something about the quality of the flower. The second one is adjectives of quantity. You tell the amount. The amount shows the amount, say five countries, the number of countries, five. You tell the, quality, uh, the quantity, the amount, say five pencils, the amount of the pencils, five. Okay. The next one is demonstrative adjectives. There are four types of demonstrative adjectives. Very simple. This, that, these and those. That is called demonstrative adjectives. You tell the placement of a certain object. You have something here. This is an object. Then that is a flower. This, these, you state a couple of things and those plural. So there are four types of demonstrative adjectives. This, that, these and those. Right. Moving on to the last type of adjectives, interrogative adjectives. Interrogative adjectives means words which we use to ask questions. Say which, where, when, likewise WH questions are there. Words that we use in order to ask questions. So this is the briefing of adjectives, the third major word class in the parts of speech. Adjectives of quality, quantity, demonstrative and interrogative adjectives. Right, we are moving to the last word class for today's session. Adverbs. Now, what is an adverb? Adverb. You know what the verb is? So, adverb. You add certain words in order to qualify the verb. In order to say something about the verb. It's not basically describes a verb, but you say something more about the verb. Or as you can say, the words which we use to add more colors to a verb. The words which we use to add more colors to a certain verb are called adverbs. So the adverbs also can be categorized into three sections. Adverb of manner, adverb of place, and adverb of time. If you talk about this adverb of manner, manner means how the action takes place. How a particular person does the activity. How. You have to ask the word how from the verb. How did this happen? How did she go? Slowly. Adverb of manner. How the action has taken place. 
So moving on to the second one, adverb of place. Where has it taken place? She went home. Where? Home. I was born in Nigambo. Where was I born? In Nigambo. So the place where the action takes place is called adverbs of place. So where? You can ask the question where from the verb. Where did she go? To the canteen. Something like that. So the word canteen will become the adverb of place. So for that you can take a certain place like a playground, a cinema, a school and also can be taken uh, Nigambo, Kalambo, Sri Lanka, Japan, likewise. Any place that, that is around you can take as adverbs of place. So the last part, adverb of time or frequency. Now I have given two. Adverb of time or frequency. When it comes to this adverb of time, you are specifically mentioning about a certain time when the action has taken place. So the way of taking the answer is asking when from the verb. When did it take place? When did this happen? At 8 o'clock in the morning, in the morning, at night, at 6 o'clock, at 5 a.m. or is on Wednesday. In Tuesday, in 2005, few weeks back. So likewise, the verbs that can be taken as adverbs are the words that we can use in order to show the time when the action has taken place. So what is this frequency? The frequency of a particular activity. At the time period, when it comes to frequency, you talk about a time period. It, happen, it happens occasionally. You celebrate your birthday occasionally. She comes home to visit her grandparents very rarely. Something like that. I usually go to school by my van. So those are the words with rarely, occasionally, usually are called adverbs of frequency. There you talk about a certain time period. But when it comes to adverb of time, you talk about, you particularly showing a time. You show at 5 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, on Monday, Tuesday, likewise, you specifically mentioning the time at about frequency a time period okay so I've given two examples at about time Wednesday and at about frequency rarely so these are the four word classes I want to highlight so next time in my next video I'm going to give you the other four word classes so till then God bless you all I hope you enjoyed my video have a pleasant stay at have a blessed stay at home, my dear students. God bless you all.